All right, we just submitted assignment one, so now we look immediately towards the next assignment, which uses similar skills for a collage creature project. If you go under assignment sheets in Canvas, you can get to the one page description of it. Just like the landscape, it needs to have at least five found uh, references that you composite together. We want it to be large, large enough to print, so bare minimum 300 p pixels per inch at 8 by 10, but I'll design something closer to 11 by 14 inches by 350, which allows you to print it even larger. It's going to be graded in the same way. Um, the this, this same brief kind of criteria, your five reference images or more should be blended together to form a convincing hybrid of different animals blended into one, kind of like a chimera from, from Greek mythology. And we're going to start by sketching out an initial idea and then finding reference that fit your idea. And make sure your reference is at the resolution or higher than, most likely higher than the resolution you need. So again, we'll be looking for things 10 megapixels, at least 8 megapixels. A creature is a little bit smaller than a landscape, but large. Uh, Pokemon designs are a good way to get started. And you can use this inspiration as loosely as you want. But if you use this Pokédex, and they do a pretty good job updating it. I don't know if it has the latest stuff, but there's, oh, this one's cool. <laughs> there's always ones I haven't seen. Some Pokemon designs are not great. Like this one, for instance. Or even this one. So what makes a good design for a character designer versus a bad design? Well, it has to do with the silhouette they make. And if you think of it as a shape, like their shadow, if this character casts a shadow on a wall, you should be able to tell what that character is based on the shadow. Because that silhouette, that cutout shape, should really suggest what the anatomy is, what the head is, what the spine is. The reason this one's not great is because it's so graphic, it's hard to get a sense of how that moves or how it would interact in a space. I'm sure they animate it well, but just from a design standpoint, it's, it's limiting. Same thing here. This has got a lot of little components like the wings and the arms and this nose that all get lost in the shadow, right? So simpler is often better. This one I actually like quite a bit because you can see the different textures, the different forms, and the kind of design thinking behind it, whatever the silhouette is. So I actually like this image even better. If I zoom in. He's a new guy. I'm trying not to limit myself too much by what I think would fit into my swamp environment. I'm just thinking of just a cool silhouette I might get inspired by. So I might steal that, do a quick little screen grab of that really low resolution as an inspiring shape. And that's really what I want, inspiring shapes. This is a pretty inspiring shape. And then you can open them in a new and get a different image of them as well. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty good. So that might be a higher. And I kind of like this, a little four-legged creature. I haven't done one in a while. It's kind of lizard-like. But the silhouette has some interesting textures to it. This one isn't as good as this in terms of just the silhouette really telling you what its shapes are. Pretty similar, but I don't like how the, the shell is so turned towards us there. And I've done a lot of turtles before. And you don't, just like you didn't want one landscape that was like one big sticker sheet that then you put things on, you don't want one creature that's so based on one known animal that you like take a donkey or a Clydesdale and then just add dreadlocks to it, change its color. Right, you want to have the freedom to really mess with something. So I, I leave it to you to use these, these inspirations the way you want. So why do I say start with a Pokemon? Well, the next step, if you look at a photo bucket and you look at past student examples or past student examples, 
The next step is to be inspired by that and to figure out its structure, to do what's called a skeletal template, which seems like you need to know a lot about drawing to do that, but it's not true. So I'm gonna walk you through that process and this is your homework. So in Photoshop, you'll just do it in your sketchbook. I'm gonna make a new file, just like I did for sketching. Come on, wake up. For sketching the landscape, I'm just going to use the default Photoshop size because this is not something that we're going to print. Use a small blue pencil. All right. So let me bring in my reference. I'm thinking I want some combination of this. Bring it as a smart object, shrink it down, place it, maybe move it up a little bit, and this. See how blurry that is? Terrible. But that's fine. It still inspires me. Just the shape. That's all I need. All right, so I've got these two inspirations. But just because they're Pokemon, that doesn't matter at all. I'm not going to be beholden to that at all. This could be your sketchbook. This could be your spiral. I'm on a half tone brush. Let me get to a normal brush. All right. So now, this is what I want my creature to be. This is my brief. Oh, I need pressure sensitive. Too many options. There we go. This is a creature collage or a creature composite, right? What do I want mine to be? I want it to be lizard-like, but spiky, with spiky shell, but not slow, like a turtle. And I don't want such an angular head, but I might play with like different kind of foot shapes, things that aren't so cliché. All right, so if it's lizard-like, I'm not going to start looking at lizards right away. First, I need to know what the body is doing, what the proportion is. So I start with a head drawing. You just start with a circle for any vertebrate creature. And you can do an invertebrate as well. You can do a spider. You can do a wasp. But you're still going to have to segment out the major shapes of the body before you find reference. And I'm going to decide, okay, which way do I want it to face? And this is where the Pokemon reference really helps. I'm going to decide that the face should be looking this way with an eye about here. I don't know what the eye is going to be yet. That's going to depend on the reference, but that's where I want it to live. I want it to have this kind of crocodile snout. So I might even put that in. So crocodile. And there's lots of different types. There's caimans, there's alligators, there's young ones, old ones, snaggled tooth ones, you know, there should be a lot of options there. On the top of the head, I'm just thinking kind of lizard so far, kind of generic. There's no big frills on the head. It does have these kind of horns, so I might, I might do something with horns. It has these ears. Or maybe I'll make them like bunny ears or something. And they go on the back of the head. Okay, before I get too far, so I'll just say ears slash horns. I'm not sure yet. It's going to depend on reference, I find. But I don't want both. I don't want ears and horns. I don't want to overdo this. Okay, now I take the direction of the head, which is going this way. And I'm going to swish it back. Because I want a flexible kind of fast spine, right? And that's kind of like the spine here on that creature. And I want a rib cage. And I have to decide, okay, where does the rib cage start? How long is the neck of this creature? And then how wide are the shoulders apart? And then the legs, I want about that wide. 
And then the hand, I want more angular, a little bit more interesting than just the lizard hand. So maybe three toes, maybe thicker, a little bit more like this. Maybe rounded, maybe furry. So I'll say like furry, thick feet. Or four legs. The front leg. And then it gets skinnier, maybe more tortoise-like. And then this is a lizard body, but it's a little bit wider at the back where the hips are. So just like I did for the collarbone and the rib cage, I'm going to do for the hips. And then I'm going to figure out how that leg works. these back legs. Similar kind of thickish back legs. Clean it up a little bit. Thinking about the silhouette. Okay, now in terms of the tail, notice this design only shows two legs, right? Even though it's a four-leg design, which makes it ideal for compositing because it suggests the whole creature without having to, to find reference multiplied over several times. But I need to know what this other leg is doing. So you do what's called drawing through, and you can see it, it's all there. And I need to know what this leg is doing, and it's kind of hunched over here. So I might need that back hunch. Okay, now the tail, the tail goes up and swoops out. What kind of tail reference? This could be fun. This might be like a kangaroo tail. It might even be like something from the animal kingdom or something outside of the animal kingdom like, um, like coral or that pink that ridges on the back. So now I get into my second part of the design. This is using the structure basically of this Pokemon the basic shapes of this Pokemon are these. This is how they keep this character consistent. You know, and I'm pretty much matching those proportions and those basic shapes. It's a little bit of difference. Because I have these longer ears and whatever. All right. So now the ridge on the back. Do these in green. There's going to be some sort of design on the back here that I want. And the ridge is going to go up the tail. And maybe that's going to be like some swamp plant kind of texture. It's natural camouflage. Maybe it has a lily pad on its back. Now, where does the spikiness come in? Just over the collarbone, I'll have these plates where I can do kind of a spiky patch, maybe like a horny, horny toad or horned lizard. Or maybe even pine cone textures. Okay, and that's my sketch. The next stage is to find reference. So I go to my class folder, I start up a new folder. You can do this at home and then bring the folder in next class with your sketch. This is assignment number two. And I'm going to have a reference folder. But that reference folder, if I open that up, it might need a few different organizing fa factors like a head, the torso, the tail, because I want different options. Um, the legs, the ears, well, I'll keep the ears with the head, and then the um, horned back, <laughs> and then the, uh, the spinal ridge. So already that's more than five 
different reference folders. These are the 